Hey guys, and welcome to this Friday's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Today, we have three questions. So every Friday, I answer your questions about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So just drop me your questions and next Friday, I will answer them. Three questions. Number one, I saw the video of people using the Surface Tracker to put logos on t-shirts. I tried on the iPad and I can't find a way to create the matte note to using the logo. Any idea on how to do this? Yes, I looked into this as well and I was confused at the beginning, but it actually works very simple. So Surface Tracker is a studio only feature. So you have to have the studio version. But if you have the studio version, you have a, let's say, for example, a clip like this. I have a drone shot here where I see this house. So the house is moving and I want to put a logo on that house and it should track it and just stick it to the wall of the house. So how can we do this? So we go to the color page and here in the color page, we search for the surface tracker. So once again, this surface tracker, you need the studio version to it so that it works. And normally we would create another note. But the problem here is if you drag the note here on top of that, Oh, it actually works. Cool. So you create a new note either with option S or for example, if you go to this icon here, you have a new note or what you also can do. And sometimes, especially on the desktop, because it works a little bit different. If you just drag that in here until you see the plus, you have this one as well. Important. We need all of those lines here. Okay. The tracker works the following. So I zoomed already in here to my shot and you basically work through all of those steps. And the first step is defining our boundaries. So I will do this now with the pencil and you have to make sure that here the open FX is on. So now I can basically click here in my frame where I want my boundary to be, where it should be tracked. I, so I will do this. That sounds good. So now we go to the mesh. So normally you can just leave the mesh as it is. You could play around with that, but most of the time that is fine. So we can go now back to tracking. And now because I'm at the beginning of my clip, I can just hit track here. If you would be somewhere in the middle, you could use this icon here for tracking backwards and forwards. So we track the whole thing. Okay, so now everything is tracked and now comes the interesting part. This is the part where he also was asking the question. Normally, if you are on the desktop, you would have here media pool. Like, you know, when we are on the cut page, we have media. That's the media pool. Or in the edit page, we have the media pool. But on the color page, <laughs> the media pool is missing. And we need a PNG file or any logo with a transparent background to drag and drop this into our color page here. But we don't have the media pool. So what's the solution? You have to give it a shortcut. So we go to the shortcuts menu, option, command and K. And now if we actually scroll down here to our workspace, and if we look down here to show panel and workspace, and we go here to media pool, we give this a shortcut. So I gave that a shortcut eight. So media pool, close. And now if I hit this shortcut eight, the media pool is opening and I have a logo here already prepared so I can just drag and drop that in here. So we have this one here there. We can close the media pool. And so what you have to do is we go with here, the green one to this green one here, bam. And the top one goes into the alpha channel here, boom. And now we have our logo here. And now what you could do is here on the result, you could change some of the settings for the logo. But in this video now, I will not go over all of that, what you can do. But basically, if we now play this back and forward, because we have all of our keyframes here, you will see that it recognized the logo and it sticks to our box. To make it more smooth, you have to play around with the boxes. But this is the basic idea, the basic concept, how you use Surface Tracker in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. Second question, do you see this is better than Final Cut Pro for the iPad? He's probably talking about, because in the last video I talked about which one is better if you just wanna use the touch, right? So, and I said in my last Q&A video that if you just wanna use a touch screen, Final Cut Pro is better because it's better optimized for being on the touch screen. If you ask me which is the best program or the better program of those, I have a clear winner in mind already. This is DaVinci Resolve without any question. Why? Because you have all of the functions you have on the desktop. Yes, there are some limitations. I talked about this on the Friday Q&As a couple of times, but the, the basic concept is it's the original program with all of the features. We even have all of the other pages. So just looking at the features, what you can do, like stuff that I did today, tracking, there is nothing like that in Final Cut Pro. The only cool feature about Final Cut Pro on the iPad is the live drawing. There's nothing like that at the moment in DaVinci because it, it crashes. But pro so basically the question is, which one is the better software? No doubt, 
DaVinci Resolve. Next question is a part of that question and it was in German, but basically, how can I make a text in a circle and around? And I will show you that, it's actually very simple. So if we come in here and we use a title like the Title Plus and we drag and drop that here to our timeline. So what you can do now is select the title and go in the inspector. And where you have to go now, like let's say we make a title, customer title for a circle in Da Vinci iPad. That no, is maybe too long. Let's, let's do it like this. So you go to the layout and here on the layout, instead of point, you can go to circle because now we have a circle and now you can actually play around with all of those values here. So for example, the width to change that. If you want to close the circle, you can do this here. You can change the size. You can also, for example, if you come here to the rotation, change the, the Z rotation to change where the text should be starting. If you want to make the spacing bigger and let's say, for example, the width should be like this. I can come back here to text and go down to the tracking and increase the tracking. So it's something like that. And now you can play around, but this is the basic concept, how you can make a circle in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. I hope this was helpful. Every Friday I answer your questions about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So keep posting the questions. So next Friday will be the next episode. I hope you have an amazing day and an amazing weekend. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bam bang gong. And we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel, bye.